And it is astonishing, I'm sure, for the governments who have to deal with these um, relentless crises to try to make some sense in a strategic framework as to how to deal with the, the changing nature of the world. And nowhere is this more evident than in the greater Middle East and in North Africa, where it is impossible to not stay glued to a television set or a newspaper in order to stay up with what is happening hour by hour and day by day. It is also, I think, impossible to predict with any great certainty the outcome. Uh, the only thing that's certain, in my view, is that things are just beginning and certainly not ending. There is a difference in the causal factors which trigger this massive public uprising, reflecting, I think, a few things, a few basic things that people want in this 21st century, that people want because they are better informed, they are better educated, and they communicate across borders. And no government, no matter how oppressive, can restrict the flow of information for very long. And those regimes that are oppressed are oppressing their people and trying to control the information flow, the way they think, the way they live, will find themselves on the losing end of this battle in the long term. People want greater personal freedom. They want greater transparency in how they're governed. They want the governments that operate under a rule of law that is fair and just. They want better economic opportunities for themselves, if not for themselves, than for their children. Whatever the future holds, it is clear that the changes will be profound and will be long-lasting. Taking the view of the optimist, I believe with all the passion I can muster that it is possible that the future could be one of great promise. It won't be easy. It won't be rapid. It will require unity of purpose by the world community and its organizations. The public and private sectors of our countries will have to work together under a whole of government concept where the military option is no longer in and of itself enough. It is necessary, but it is not enough. I think it would be interesting to put ourselves in the mind of the most senior Iranian leaders today and think about what's going through their minds, if that were to be possible. I believe that the Iranian regime has been, to use an American term, flying under the radar since the upheavals in Tunisia. 